let's talk a little about um, the research or the design process. And uh, in some cases, I'll talk about each one individually. Other times, I will talk about uh, them together. Um, so that way, you can um, you know get a, a sense as to how they line up. So. If you look at you know the research process as sort of a, a, a lockstep kind of model, and oftentimes in, in education we don't go in locksteps, um, both in the research process and in the instructional design process. Oftentimes it becomes a more cyclical thing as opposed to uh, the kind of model that you see here. Uh, for example, it's not uncommon that as you are collecting data, you realize that there are some flaws or some adjustments, revisions that need to be made to your research design, uh, which would obviously you know, make this a more cyclical kind of process. Similarly, um, as you're starting to analyze your data, you might realize that there are things that you know you have still have questions about that you don't have answers for, which requires you to go back and collect more or different types of data. Um, so you know, as you look at sort of these five steps, uh, you know you can see sort of all of the steps that are kind of underneath each of them, and where we are supposed to be in this class is sort of in this one. Um, you know, right here, where we are using the literature to help us figure out what is the uh, best methodological approach as we refine our research question or our research purpose, and then using that literature to help guide us in terms of the types of tools and instruments, and for that matter, even the methods of data collection and data analysis that we are using. Um, you know, now obviously. Um, one of the things actually I would take issue with in this graphic is this approval for study via IRB. That has to happen before you start collecting data, so in reality they've got it as part of the collecting data stage, but it really should be at the bottom of this stage down here uh, because you have to do that before you can start collecting data. So that actually lines up fairly well with the design process and there are literally hundreds possibly even thousands of different instructional design models um, while they call this one a model the ADDI model um, ADDI if you look at the instructional design literature tends to be used most often as a framework um, so that's one of the things that um, you know uh, I, I don't know if you guys have had an instructional design course as part of your curriculum or if that's coming up or maybe it's not even part of the ed tech program. I know it is in some and not in others. Um, but typically speaking, regardless of the type of model that you will look at, um, they will have all of these five components in there. Now in some cases these components might be overlapping, so you might see two of them in a single step or they might take two steps to do three of them but the things that are described in these five areas so that's often why we call ADDI a framework as opposed to a model uh, when you're looking at it um, so um, but when you're comparing the two processes sort of side by side you know they're really doing much of the same thing so if you look at the you know the steps in the five steps that were in that research process compared to the five steps in the design process you know there's a fair degree of overlap essentially the types of things that were listed in that research ideas phase really those are the types of things that you would find out during the analysis phase of an instructional design process. Um, one of the nice things about an instructional design process is that it tends to be much more systematic in nature in terms of you know generating those ideas because um, while well, the analysis phase, and you'll see this when I, I put up the last slide, uh, has much more formalized steps in it than what the research ideas area did. Um, the research design is really, when you look at it from an instructional design perspective, um, it looks at both the design and the development stage. Um, because in a research design, uh, 
that's really where you're figuring it, what the methodology is going to be, what are my data collection methods going to be, what are the instruments that I'm going to use as a part of those methods, and then how am I going to go about analyzing that data. Whereas the design and development phase, the design phase is well exactly as it sounds. That's where you sort of design what your project is likely going to look like. Um, the development phase is actually when you develop all of the materials for it. Um, so, uh, you know, when I talk about the methodology and the data collection methods and the data analysis methods, whoops, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Um, that's really looking at this idea of the design part, whereas the instruments, the things that are going to collect that data, that really overlays well with the development part. Um, you know, and in the case of the research process, the next stage obviously would be when we actually go out and collect the data that we are going to be used as part of our, our research project, whereas in a design project, that's where we actually do whatever it is we're going to do or use whatever it is that we've developed. So if your project was to do, say, professional development with your staff, that's where you actually do the PD. Uh, if you're doing a research project uh, where you're you know, generating the thesis, that's where you're collecting the data. Either way, it's where you're actually doing the stuff. Uh, your data analysis is basically very similar to the types of things that you would do in the analysis, or sorry, the evaluation phase of the design process. Um, you know, in this case, you're analyzing the data to answer your research questions. In this case, you, you or sorry, in this case, you are evaluating the data to determine if you met your project goals or your project objectives. Um, you know, so when you look at these two uh, fit, you know, processes side by side, really the only thing that you have in the design process, or sorry, that you have in the research process that's not in the design process is this publication process. Um, but because either way we're requiring you to write a four chapter document, um, the nature of the thesis project still has that publication process built into it. Um, so, you know, when you look at these two things against each other, the types of things that you're going to be doing are very similar throughout um, in the different stages. We just call them different things and you're actually doing slightly different things. You know, and I apologize, this slide doesn't come out quite as good. It's basically taken right out of the um, the master's handbook that uh, you guys should have access to and if you didn't have access to it in 710 there's a link to it in the administrative area in Canvas um, I think think it's the second last link that I've got there um, but essentially it's a, a table I think it appears on like page 16 or so that um, lists the requirements for what you would actually submit at the end of both of these and as you can see, they line up fairly well. You know, so when you're looking, regardless, the thesis is on your left, the project is on the right. Um, you know, all that front matter content is the exact same. When you get to chapter one, um, again, with the exception of the fact that in chapter one, you, if you're doing a research project, you're having questions, having a little bit about methodology and a little bit about limitations, whereas if you're doing a project, you're talking about the purpose and the objectives of the project. But everything else is the exact same. Chapter 2, which is going to be sort of the major um, opportunity or the major uh, assignment uh, task for this class, is the exact same regardless of which of the two that you're using. Um, so it's the exact same regardless of thesis or project. Um, in terms of chapter three, those are going to look very differently, but if you look at the actual uh, components of them, they have a great deal of consistency. You know, so both of them have an introduction, both of them have a little bit of background. Um, in the case of the thesis, you're going to start off by talking about the research design and methodology. In the case of the project, you're going to start talking about essentially what the project entails and how you're going to structure the project. And if you think about it, um, a structure or a framework for the project is just a fancy way of saying the methodology of a research project. Uh, methodology is actually just a fancy word for framework, really. Um, the project design is actually how you are going to go about implementing the project. 
which if you look at it, the methodology really is how you're going to um, you know, collect the data for your research. Uh, the, the big difference here, and the, in all honesty, the big difference between, probably the biggest difference between these two documents, is this final section. You will note that in the case of the project, there isn't a results section. Uh, it's only the, the thesis that has a results section. Um, but you'll notice that that comes up a little bit later in the project. Uh, so moving to chapter four, uh, these ones again are going to have a great deal of consistency, but there's going to be a, a slight difference. So you'll notice again the uh, things that you have included in the research thesis over here, they tend to build out of the types of things you have here in chapter one. So essentially these are the things that you hope to accomplish, now that you've done it, here's what we were able to accomplish is sort of a good way of looking at this. For the project, the big difference is that when you look at this idea of, you know, the recommendations based on the evaluation of the project, while you don't have a results section in Chapter 3, what you write here is actually going to be much more significant than what you have over here for recommendations of future research. So essentially what this part here is, is the results of your evaluation. So you're still actually writing a results portion. It's just in a different spot because of the nature of the project. Um, you know, the references are the same for both. And then when you look at the appendices, the big difference here is that the appendices for the research project essentially are all of the artifacts along the way. So it's your data collection instruments, it's your approved IRB form. The appendix in your um, project is going to include many of those same things, but it's also going to include a copy of the actual project. So if you if your instructional design project or if your thesis project was to, I'll use the example again, of conducting a uh, professional development with your staff, the materials, the plan, the, um, the evaluation instruments, all of those things are what you include in the appendices. If your project is to create some kind of handbook that's going to get used by your staff, a copy of the actual handbook is actually included in the appendices. Um, you know, so that's sort of how the two of them line up against each other. Uh, when you look at them in terms of how they line up to that research process that we were looking at, or that instructional design process. So here's the thesis one and how it compares to the instructional design one. So the whole thing is the publication process. So that whole thesis document, so everything that you see over here on the right hand side of the screen, that's the publication process. Chapter one is essentially looking at this idea of the research ideas. Um, chapter three is really where what encompasses all of the rest of what you saw in that particular graphic. Um, so, you know, that's something to keep in mind as you're actually putting this together. And the reason I say this is because, again, when you look at um, this particular one, this is the project against the project outline. So, again, as I mentioned, because we're requiring you to write this up, well, there wasn't a official step or phase of publication process with the instructional design framework that I gave you, you still have a publication process and it's essentially all of this over here on the left. Like the research process, your chapter one essentially is that first phase, that analysis phase. Chapter three is where the majority of the rest of it happened. And I say the majority of it because you'll see I've got to evaluate here but it's kind of on the line and actually to make it more correct, I should have put it kind of like that. So that way you see that it's right on the line because the evaluate phase, you're going to have the plan for it up here in the project description, but the actual doing of it ends up down here in this portion. Um, so again, you're seeing that, you know, the overlay of the work that's there um, is fairly consistent regardless of which one that you choose. And um, 
I will be honest, in, in chatting with Dr. Redman, and I remember we started this conversation back probably in October, uh, you know, I had wanting to know from her in particular, you know, the number of students that choose project over thesis and, and how that generally plays out. And, um, and it's been her experience that the vast majority tend to pick the thesis route. Um, it's also been her experience that the project route tends to be a lot more writing, largely in part because you have the same four chapter format and the components of those four chapters have a great deal of similarity across from them and the things that are a little bit heavier in one like the results portion of chapter three um, show up in other places in the other one like the evaluation stuff that you have in the project one the big difference is down here in the appendices um, you know you but basically once you've done the IRB you have all of the appendices for the thesis because you've got your questionnaires, your surveys, your interview protocols, your consent forms, your information sheets, you have the approved IRB form. The appendices for the project is the actual project in addition to all of this stuff up here. So it's been her experience and I in all honesty have no comparison point because the programs that I've worked in didn't have this project route like this. Um, but she tells me in her experience that the project route involves a lot more writing than what the thesis route does. Um, now, I know a number of you have expressed interest in the project route, so I did want to include uh, a little bit about sort of what those phases included. Um, this is actually a, a framework or a, a document that I got as a part of my own graduate training at the University of Georgia that um, you can see the code on the bottom there uh, from Dr. Rob Branch uh, back when I was a doc student there uh, taking his instructional design course and this I've always found to be an incredibly useful document because it actually breaks down the various phases of the instructional design process into discrete steps uh, specifically he has it designed into 21 individual steps um, that he has uh, created. Now this is based upon his own instructional design model and like I say there are literally hundreds out there if you were to go to Google right now and write down instructional design model all in quotations you would find hundreds of them and it's just a matter of finding one that speaks to how you are planning to do this. So. For those of you that are doing a thesis, you're going to be selecting a methodology. For most of you, it'll either be action research or case study. For those of you that are doing a project, you're looking at an instructional design model as what uh, is going to sort of guide the framework of how you are going about this. Um, you know, and, and ADDIE is a good sort of framework or paradigm um, to allow you to um, structure that project there. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you guys had access to this document because, like I say, these discrete steps down here under the procedures, the conceptual descriptions are useful, but really breaking it down into the individual parts um, are really what um, is, is going to be of, of greatest use to you as you are working through this.